will be back on the estate tomorrow night when Karen finds out if Sharon's half-sister is also Barry's long-lost brother and Harry comes face to face with the devastating loss of his hairline. That's the estate tomorrow at 8.30. But before we go live to Eamon and the gang, there's just time to look forward to what's coming up later tonight on Channel One. At 9.30, we have an in-depth documentary about the downfall of Jacob Hamilton Mann, which forced this year's early election. That's The Night Visitor at 9.30, poorly narrated by Patrick Bannon. At 10.30, Adrian Atkinson Blimey is here for a special episode of Incisors, where he sinks his teeth into the current cost of living crisis by interviewing a multimillionaire, a nurse and a bin man to see who is suffering the worst. Here's a clue, it's not the millionaire. At 11.30, fasten your seatbelts as it's time for Wayne to Spirit Whistle to lead another terrifying exploration in Live and Spooky. And tonight, they'll be asking if the old brewery in Arsminster is... Yeah, I realise that, Eric, but this isn't the news, is it? We're not reacting live to the politics here. This is a... All right, this one's going to be all politics. Family entertainment. Watching the politics is for lonely people who enjoy being perpetually disappointed. Personally, I'd rather take a cutthroat razor and cut the head off my... Yep, standing by... Good evening, I'm Eamon Tightly. Behind me is a true TV legend, now running for Prime Minister, everyone's handiest man, Peter Clement. Now, Peter thinks he's been brought here tonight to film a special reunion episode of Just the Job, but as always, viewers, you know better. Ten seconds, places. It's time. Let's start the show. In five, four, three, four, three... When you feel lethargic and your life is monotone, I've got just Cracking stuff. Good evening, friends. And yes, it's true, and I can hardly really believe it myself. We are back with a special one-off reunion episode of Just the Job. And just to be clear, it is the show that you remember. With me old sidekick, little Jimmy Chisel, some top tips on how to improve your DIY, and of course, some... Dave Secret Society and Cult, how can we indoctrinate you today? Interesting. Hi, Dave, I'm... Eric, we've met. Don't worry about it, I'm very forgettable. <laughs> Not fucking lightly. Okay, uh, hang on a minute. And stand by, Eamon. And go, Eamon. Hold on a second. It's you. Yeah, it certainly is me. You naughty, naughty hell. <laughs> Sorry, Frank, Frank, Frank. Did you know about this? <laughs> Look at that, but you think you fucking did, didn't you? <laughs> Fuckers, a lot of you. Uh, Peter, you thought you were here tonight yeah. to Peter, record a special reunion you. episode of Just the Job. I, ca I can't believe this. But tonight, Peter this. Clement, but tonight, these are the bits of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get you back to the studio. You little <laughs> fucker, don't <laughs> you? And, uh, bloody little, bloody dancing, everybody, all the way along. No. They're all fun. This way, Peter, mind your steps there. I don't know. Really know. <laughs> I can't believe it. Honestly, I'm a huge fan of you. Right, I'm back. Of course, you 
it's colder than an unstair out here. I know, mate. Apparently the cool machine up there is somehow set to manual tonight. If you just leave it alone, it'll hopefully call the guests in the right order. So please leave it alone. The last time the guests came out in the wrong order, they even had an episode. And the show ran half the length. A lot of complaints about that. Oh, there's Eamon. Gotta go. Remember, don't give Eamon an episode. Bye. Now, whatever makes you think I would do something like that. Eamon, how long have you been playing, Eamon? Eamon? Peter Gordon Clement, you were born October 10th, 1923, in the northern town of Rothering, to Fanny and Martin Clement. And his penis is still exactly the same size. <laughs> That's right. Exactly size. I think so. That's right. They got up at the crack of dawn to make the coach trip all the way down to the capital. It's your infamous old ma'am and her long-suffering husband, Fanny and Martin Clement. <laughs> The best of the glorious death is done. Your cards are wrong. <laughs> you dreadful man. You tyrannical bugger. I bring a special bottle for us, but they rush me on, and so I leave backstage. You visit me at hotel. 415 Capital Road. Room six. Just know that address down in case we fancy a little drink after the show. <laughs> uh, uh, lovely to have you both here. Uh, so tell me, what was life like for Peter growing up in the Clement house? I go peasant children, I imagine. Who are you calling a peasant? <laughs> Poverty <laughs> makes men. Hardship makes us hard. It's Hardship where word gets named, yes. Uh, let Peter grow up in gutter. Actually, Eamon, I was the first household to have a television in our street. It make him strong. And now he won't make your country strong. No, mate. I want to make it fair. Well, let's not wander into politics. Well, <laughs> not that kind of show. <laughs> Ivan von, the, uh, the Irkestanian ambassador, everyone, with the, the first Irkestanian of the bits of your life. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, it does not matter if you make it fair or strong. You know, in seven weeks' time, you'll be back at Grange, and I'll be waiting there to beat you at golf. Paul, oh. this would say otherwise. Oh. This is why an Irkestan we have all posters shot. <laughs> you should try it. They're always wrong anyway. Turns out nobody missed them. Very popular songs. In 1938, you were a 15-year-old at Rothering Elementary, but already you had quite the reputation as a ladies' man. Who's this, Peter? Sorry, we late, love, but better late than up the doof, as they say at the docks. Well, it's me old man, Eamon. It's your childhood sweetheart, Chelsea Bond. Uh, let me ask you this. Oh, yeah, no, this uh, still works, yeah. This. What do you think we could see in Peter way what back then that could have predicted his path to household then. name and now aspiring household Prime Minister? Oh, now great, straight back in the feckin' politics. Oh, he were a lovely child. <laughs> and he stood up for what was right, <laughs> always. <laughs> He stood up to you too when you've been a great big bully. Who needed toughening up? There's more to life than singing songs and making up little plays. He couldn't stand injustice, you see. He was like a red nonce in a playgroup to him. He had to try and fix it. Always sticking his nose in everyone's business. That's what you want in a leader. Someone who sees something wrong and makes it better. Mr. and Mrs. Clement, everybody! <laughs> Well, uh, just before we bring our next guest on, we've got a classic clip from Just the Job. It's over on that monitor there, Peter, if you'd like to take a look. Over on that monitor there, Peter, if you'd like to take a look. 
And that's so about two minutes. To I'm going to take a closer look. I can't see that without my glasses. And we plan to get a contestant on each week to play. Uh, it was an idea that Peter and Jimmy came up with at the pub one night. <laughs> Anyway, oh, bottoms up. Very well. First, we got a bit feisty, and the contestant beat up the makeup girl. And the Interesting had, choice. I'll drink to time. that. Ah. She kept making jokes about. Oh, me. drink yeah. again. Yeah, why not? Got to keep the old grey matter Pretty lubricated good. after all. Can we reset, out. please? Next week's contestant dropped out. I wanted to cancel it, but. Pete and Jimmy, they had other ideas. Well, it's time for a segment that the papers have called explosive and the prudes have called inadvisable, reckless and puerile. It's our drink to that. Drink to that. Now, I want to say up front that our floor manager, Frank, advised us against doing this, didn't you, Frank? Yes. I definitely did advise against doing this. It's a bad idea. Get, Get off, off the, the screen, screen, Frank! Get on with it, then. Tonight's guest fancies himself as a bit of a handyman. It's everyone's favourite TV personality, it says here on the card, Peter Glamour. Good evening, it's a yeah. pleasure to be here. Now, I've never met you before, have I, PC? You don't mind if I call you PC, do you? You can call me whatever you like, pal. Not according to my contract. Well, if you've read a paper at any point this week, you know how this bit goes. So, shall we make a start? Total stranger who I've never met before? Yeah, don't labour the point, LJ. Cats are better than dogs. I'll drink to that. Funny, always had you down as a dog person. What can I say, Mrs. C likes a stroke of an evening. <laughs> I'm sure she does. Coffee is better than tea. Especially first thing in the morning. Hey! You're supposed to say, I'll drink to that. Oh, shite, sorry. I'll drink to that. Hey! Yeah, I'll see what you did there. I always said you had excellent eyesight. Yeah, I'll drink to that. Oi, hey! that wasn't in rehearsals. <sighs> Skinny is better than Binny Bob Jean Schultz. Never heard of either of them. So I guess I'll drink to that. Skinny was in here last week doing this. Oh, is that who she was? Yeah. I thought she was in porn the way she kept banging on about her Girls parents. are better than boys. And Mrs. C is the best of the lot, and I will definitely drink to that. Oh, now, this one's going to be hard for you, because we both know how much you want that shot. I do. I do want that shot. Little Jimmy Chisel, popular and handsome daytime TV entertainer and master craftsman. He doesn't say that. He does, on his look. He says, Little Jimmy Chisel and all that good stuff about me is better than fading amateur woodworker Peter Clement. Fading amateur woodworker? <laughs> That's what it says here on the card. Let me see that card. See? You've written that in pen, you cheeky bastard. <laughs> I'll drink to that. It's all gonna be political, don't you think? Well, the bloke's running for Prime Minister. How do you think it was gonna go? It would help if we could stick to the script. Well, Eamon, you are managing. Ten course, seconds, everybody. No, we're not incisors, are we? All devolved into a fight. Okay, we're Jimmy going in five, four, three. We never did do that segment again. What fantastic memories there from one of the nation's most beloved TV shows. Now, Just the Job had two successful runs, of course, from 58 to 64, and again from 1972 to 1976. And across many, many of those shows, there was always one man by your side. I may be many reprehensible things, Eamon, but I am certainly not anything as dreadful as a man. Oh, Christ, that's going to happen. You called me Ollie, you used to shower, I've seen to be unimproved delinquent. I will be calling Bumsman immediately after this debacle, don't you worry. Eric, have a full production team is sent to my dressing room. <laughs> Petey, sweetie, I'm sorry you're having to enjoy this clusterfuck. <laughs> Wouldn't happen on three. <laughs> Do you have a question you want me to ignore? Do you have a question well, to you're well, certainly in a position to give us a unique insight on this bit of Peter's life. What are the differences, would you say, between the on-screen and off-screen versions of Peter Clement? Oh, well, that's actually a good question. Oh, thank Christ. There was this famous episode of Just the Job when I was just a runner. There was this old lady coming on and her husband had recently passed on and she wanted to finish making his last project. 
A shoe rack, I think. Spice rack. A shoe rack. Spice rack, spice yes, rack. of course. Uh, actually, yes, we've got a bit of archive footage actually, which shows yes, exactly what you've just been talking about. Uh, let's exactly roll that there. Just been talking about. Uh, let's roll oh, that there. Sorry about my hands, love. They're so shaky these days. Oh, don't you worry, pet. Let's get that stuck in that hole, shall we? <laughs> Cheeky boy. My urn, he loved a laugh. Bit of a comedian, was he? Oh, yeah. I always thought he'd end up on the telly. But he got something in his lungs, see, in the pits. Oh, God, that's awful, Judy. He hated that job. Dark and sweaty and back-breaking. Not fit for a person, he'd call it. But we needed the money, so he, he stuck it out. Mm, hard worker. Even when they cut the overtime, he, he stayed loyal. But when he started coughing up blood, they couldn't get rid of him quickly enough. Threw him on the slag heap. Oh. And the day he died, the very day, they cut the pension. So we get by, Pat? Well, the kids are trying their best to help out. It's been easier in the summer. But um, winter is round the corner and... Um, Outrageous. No one should have to. No one should have to. I'll tell you what, Judy. I'm going to pay you that pension. Huh? I'm going to pay it out of my own pocket and I'm going to keep paying it as long as you need it. Huh? And that's a Peter Clement promise. <laughs> Touching stuff. How long were you paying her, Peter? Oh, bugger, I, I, I don't remember. A few years. So generous. No, not really, Eamon. There's barely a fraction of what I was getting paid to fart about on TV. I'm not joking, Eamon. Now it's changed for people like her. But you and me, we're drinking at the Frampton. How's that just, mate? Well, I could certainly afford to pay a little bit more. Then I've got more than I know what to do with. What about you, I mean, where's your cash? What about you, I mean, where's your cash? I have a lot of children. Dorothy Hammerman, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, you're not just gonna kiss me when you Oh, it's gonna make your fanny clench, don't I promise you that. Oh well. Had a good run. In 1941, long before 1941, Just the Job ever aired, you, the like so many men of your generation, you were conscripted into the army to go to the continent to, to fight. To to and it was on those very battlefields that the strangest of friendships was born. Oh, Peter, what have we let ourselves in for? Oh, actually, that doesn't work. It's your friend of over 40 years, the current Irkistanian. Oh, well, no, actually, no, we've had him. Uh, play the music. Still not true. I'm Julia Salisbury. I'm, I'm running for Prime Minister. Ah, oh, that explains it. Yeah, I've no interest in politics. Over there. Strange show. It's just the job, I suppose. The whole industry is like this. You're getting used to it. I'm not sure I want to. <laughs> Oh, thank you for joining us. Um, what's it like to be friends with Peter Clement? Well, um... Well, Are we friends? I bloody hope so, or I've made a dreadful mistake. <laughs> well, they say that politics make strange well, bedfellows, but that couldn't be more true in our case. At first glance, it's like we're chalk and cheese, but, but dig a little and you'll find that we share the same core beliefs. We both grew up poor. Yes. I only went to Poshborough because of the grant programme. Now abolished by Hamilton Mann. Yes, another rung of the ladder smashed out. When I saw the lives and experiences of the privately educated trust fund children who make up more than 90% of Poshborough's intake to this day, well, it really opened my eyes to what inequality really means. This is something that Julia and I hold very dear. You see, there is enough cake for everyone, but these posh twats are hoarding more than they can ever eat. Uh, as 
Watch your language, Peter. <laughs> the viewers will be phoning in complaints. Ah, they've been bleeping me for years. Can't see it stopping any time soon. Julia something or other, everybody. <laughs> Always friends, better than everything else. All we're doomed to being acquaintances. Worse. Colleagues. Well, uh, it wasn't only just the well, job that brought you into the nation's the hearts. Starting in 1977 and running every weeknight for almost six years, you brought that inimitable Peter Clement style to your eponymously named late night chat show, Petey. Let's take a look at a clip now. Let's take a look at it. I was a runner on PT. It was my first And a couple of minutes back. Same as before, Eric. Uh, yeah, that's good. It's all gone a bit news, hasn't it? What do you expect when you interview the next Prime Minister? I just couldn't leave. It was like a family. Until it wasn't. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure regular viewers will have noticed there's been something a little different about tonight's show. Normally on this show, we have... Everything OK? Do you think I did the right thing, Eric? Shutting it all down for a career in politics? Of course you did, mate. If you win. Reset, everybody. Written by your own hard times. I've done a few things over the years where I can to help folks out. I've opened my checkbook from time to time, certainly, and I've tried to open my heart but the thing is, ladies and gents, it's not enough. And it never will be. Not sat here doing this. You might remember a few months ago when I had an impressive barrister here called Julia Salisbury. We talked about standing up to society's bullies. She inspired me, actually, and we stayed in touch. And we talked a lot. And we've concluded that there is only one way to help the sheer number of people we both aspire to. So, the programme you've just watched was the last ever episode of PT. I'm sorry, that must be a shock. We've known it here for a few weeks now, but we didn't want to fuss or a star-studded final special episode. Just ordinary people. The people who need to advance. You'll be hearing that word a lot over the coming year. And you'll be seeing me out and about, and I hope you'll all come and say hello and tell me what I can do for you. Because over the last almost seven years, you've all done... So very much... for me. Get up here before I start welling up. <laughs> this is Dorothy Hammerman, a woman who, despite never appearing on this show until now, has somehow managed to become a household name. Absolutely. I'd never do anything as desperate as booking myself onto your show. It's not my show. It's yours. Well, it's got your name on it. It's ours. OK. It's ours. <laughs> Dorothy's off to take all the lessons that she's learnt here to shake up one of our rivals who I am not going to give a free advert to. Well, I will. It's three. <laughs> As channel controller, Dorothy will be the most powerful woman in television. It'll still be a damn sight easier than putting up with your nonsense. <laughs> Dorothy Hammerman, everybody. Yeah. 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 Well, I guess that's it. Over the last few years, I've poured my heart and my soul into this thing. Really, I have. And I've worked to the point of collapse on far, far too many occasions. I've tried to be honest about everything as I see it. Maybe you've learned something. Maybe you've felt something. Maybe you've laughed along the way or maybe just you okay why wouldn't i be okay ah oh, good good would i not be okay because thus far we've had every single guest out in the wrong order right so you're not okay Clint. let's see how this next piece goes shall we well at least you make the papers these last words i couldn't what's that now the papers this political stuff this Thank is you. front page news Eamon. 
from pages. Yeah, and probably pages two to seven. This is big, Eamon. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should read the papers. Ten seconds, everybody. What's the point? Can't do anything about any of it anyway. OK, we are going in five, four, three. Unforgettable stuff. But Unforgettable while you took all the credit, stuff. arguably, someone credit, else did all the hard work, didn't they now? The <laughs> now that's <laughs> not how I remember it. Petey always did his share of the work with me, if you get my drift. I've no idea who that is. You? I've no idea who It's on the tip of me tongue. And it wouldn't be the first time. It wouldn't be the first time. Cheeky me. Cherry slice. I genuinely have no idea. I genuinely have no idea. It's Chelsea Bonds. Of course it is. Oh, play the fucking music. <laughs> right, there we go. Take a seat. Uh, so, uh, Petey ran for nearly six years. Tell me, what was your favourite moment from all those shows? Um, from his late night chat shows. Yep, that's the question. Yep, that's the question. I never watched them, love. I never watched them, love. It ran every weeknight for nearly six years. It ran every weeknight for nearly six years. Even so. Well, this is awkward. Oh, it's not you, Peter Love. I'm sorry, it's not. It's just that, well, everything is so fucking expensive these days. I mean, look at the price of the lecky. Price of everything, really. You know, they want to put me on one of those prepay meter thingies, you know, stop me falling behind again. See, the way I see it, though, is, well, it's about choices. Do I watch telly for an hour? Do I watch your show? Or, I don't know, do I have three boils of the kettle? That kind of thing. And you know what really gets my goat? It's that each year everything just costs more and, well, it, they last less time. And I'm not rich. I never married. I don't own my own home. I got no savings. <laughs> Lord knows what will happen when my back Lord finally knows, gives way and I can no work anymore. <sighs> Do you remember when we were kids, love? You if you had a job, you could get you by. Job, you could but get nowadays, but even if you have got a job, it, <sighs> even if you, have got you can a job, barely keep your head above water. Let me help you, Charles. Come on, Petey. You barely remember my name. You barely That's what they'll put on me gravestone, you know. That's what they'll put on me gravestone. Chelsea Wednesday. Chelsea Disposable Wednesday. woman. Oh, but I do remember you. Oh, but I do. Some persons hold Some that there is a wisdom hold. of the head. There is a wisdom and a heard. wisdom of the heart. And a wisdom of the heart. I remember. Let me help you, Chelsea. I've got money. I no, can no, Petey. Thank you, no, love, but no, it wouldn't be right. Besides, I weren't asking for help. I, I was I just, I was just explaining why I didn't watch his show, love. Hey, I bet it were great though. Because you always were. You always were. Huh. Huh. Chelsea Wednesday, everybody. <laughs> it's not right, Charles. None of it. You do me proud, right? Or I will go to those tabloids myself and I will tell them what we did the second time you took me under that stage. <laughs> And so that brings us to last year, when you surprised the whole country by announcing you were giving it all up to form your own political party. And so, because the final bits of your life is always about the future... Tune me up! Co-leader of... No. No, wait. Who's left?
No way. Uh, Who's next? Oh, yeah, it's got to be uh, little oh, Jimmy yeah. Chisel. Should have been on second. Sorry about that. I could be in the pop now. Yeah. And that's for you. Okay, okay, excuse me there. Let's, let's all just take a seat now. Take a seat. <laughs> there we go. Well, uh, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, do you think Peter Clement would be a good fit for politics? Absolutely, yes. He's a two faced prick. He should fit right in. Jesus, LG, what's got your goat? You have your smug bastards. Been sat back there in the holding area watching this love fest on the monitors, and no one's got the guts to tell you to your face what you really are. Oh, hey. And what's that, Jim? You're a bully, Pete. You were pranks. Not to me. Not to me, they weren't. Well, why didn't you say something? I needed the money, pal. I was living in a shitty room above a curry house and you were eating truffles with your celebrity pal. Well, we paid you, didn't we? Yeah, but it weren't much. Not with my brother and his demands. He needed special care. And those adaptations to his house, they didn't come cheap. Well, why didn't you say something? That could have helped you. Oh, put your fucking checkbook away. I'm sick and tired of you salving your conscience with grand acts of charity. That's not why I do that. Well, is that what you're going to do if we elect you? Give everybody a right big fucking back check. How's that going to work? Check. How's that going to work? Oh. Little Jimmy Chisel, everybody. <laughs> I trust I can rely on your vote, then. And you can sit your fucking song up your arse and all. Fantastic. Well, um, Fantastic. we've got a bit of a well, surprise um, coming up for you next, but uh, before we do that, let's take a look at the current uh, Peter Clement. Let's take a look at those debates from a few weeks ago. At those debates from a few weeks ago. We're going to invest record sums in health, education and welfare. <laughs> Of course, it may mean that we have to ask everybody across the country to dig into their pockets a little just to help us out. Ridiculous. Mr. Kerman, please control yourself. Mr. Hamilton, man. This is a country that celebrates success. Where, if you work hard and apply yourself, you too can reap the benefits of your labours. And let's not forget, the rich pay more money in tax than any other section of society. Well, if they want to pay less tax, they could choose to have less money. Hard Don't work. Don't talk deserve... to me about hard work, Mr. Hamilton, man, with your soft hands and your silver tongue. You've never worked a day in your life. <laughs> it was prime minister for the last three years. Not because you needed the salary, because you wanted to make the policies that ensured that your real wealth was protected, because that is what you lot do. You pretend you've earned it, but nearly all of you haven't. It was just there, all along. Your money makes you money while you play the great orator. You have built nothing. <laughs> I built a strong economy with significant foreign investment. For who? Where is this growth that you keep banging on about? All I can see is the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. Well, enough is enough. You got too greedy, pal. You got too greedy, pal. And now you're going to lose it a lot. Of course, our party understands that we must raise tax gradually, or we risk an exodus of all of the wealth creators. Let them try. Uh, sorry, I didn't catch that. I said, let them fucking try. Well, in just five short weeks, we'll find out if those words hold true. But tonight, Peter Clement, these are the bits of your life. Take it away, boys! When you're feeling destitute and just can't face the week, I've got just, just a job. When you read the papers and it all seems pretty bleak, I've got just, just a job. This is when you're warm and damp. He always use protection. He'll bring it. That was you being asked for an interview for the nightly news next week. What now? They called you in the song. You're going to be interviewed by Jeremy Donaldson. Oh, God, no, I hate that strange little man. Over the last year, more and more people.
people have been looking to advance for answers. All right, well, we're not finished yet, but... He's such a sweetie when he's on your TV. It's such a treat with all...